Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to take photos in the middle of the night. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Romani. I'm a French photographer living normally in Paris, France, but right now I'm in the US. And I do two tutorials per week, except last week I didn't do two tutorials because I was in Mexico. But I'm back. And now, this week, I'm going to talk to you about shooting in the night. I had to take a specific monument in Mexico called the Palacio de Bella Artes. And I'm going to show you how I took this in the middle of the night because it's a pretty cool photo. That's the final result. One thing I would like to ask you guys is some help. I have a new affiliate program where you can promote my work and my training and make a little bit of money. That'd be so nice if you can do that. All you have to do is go to my website, click on tutorials, and at the bottom of the page, you will see this link called Affiliates. This way you can contact Amity, who is my assistant, and she will provide you with all you need to become an affiliate and help promote my work. That'd be so nice if you can do that. But now let's go to Mexico and let me show you how I retouch this photo. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. So just before we start this tutorial, I just want to uh, remind you that I created a couple of weeks ago uh, my gear page on my website, photosearch.com. What it is, is basically my recommended gear. Uh, so I go over first the cameras, the, all the cameras I'm using, Sony and Canon, the plugins that I use, uh, the software that I use to make my, web, my website, and what I use to clean my gear, the camera filters that I use. And here is a recommended Canon started kit. If you're just starting in photography, this is the kit I should, uh, I mean, I, the, the, the things I would advise you to get, which are the cheapest, but you know, still professional gear you can get if you want to get started in photography. The Canon starter kit is really good. And if you want to go like me, like the Sony route, this is my recommended stuff. Now I made a mistake last week and I got hanged for it. Also, this is my portrait composite gear. Less, about $300 to make amazing com uh, portrait composite. It goes with my portrait composite course, which you can check out, uh, which actually will I put the trailer also of this course at the end of this tutorial. Um, this, I made a mistake last week because on the Canon Pro kit, I, uh, I put some Sigma lens, which was for an APS-C, meaning small sensor. Uh, the, the lens that I meant to put was this one, the Tokina, 1628 for Canon. All my life I've been using the Canon 1740, which I must say I must have taken the well of my Canon life for 10 years, 95% of all my photos with that one lens because I do mostly interior design and landscape. And then my son turned me into this lens, which he bought the 1628. So it's, um, it doesn't go to 40, it goes to 28, but it's usually that's the range I used to shoot my interior design, very wide, like 1720 for most of the time. And, but it opens at 2.8. So theoretically it's, I mean, we find it very sharp and it's cheaper than the 1740 from Canon. So sorry for that mistake, guys. This is the correct lens I meant to advise you on. Okay, now to this week's tutorial, which is uh, how to shoot in the night. Now shooting in the night is something I rarely really do because um, I don't like when you don't have details in the sky. Now, I was in Mexico last week working for a member of the congressman and he wanted me to take a photo of the um, Palacio Bella Artes, which is like the Palace of the Beautiful Art, which is this building uh, in Mexico. I tried so many things to get this building and uh, finally I ended up taking a night shot and I'll tell you why. Uh, first, this is like a regular afternoon shot of it. There's people there. I don't like, I'm too low. It's it, we cannot see, it's a beautiful building, we cannot see it well. So then I got up at five or six in the morning and I, I got this shot, started getting this type of shot. You know, the, it, it was still dark. Uh, so now we only have a few people there. There's no details in the sky. This kind is, this one is kind of cool and I might use this one. Uh, then a bit later on the same morning, you know, I just moved around it. I was trying to find a nice composition of it. And uh, then I said, okay, I'm gonna try shooting it at night because you know, um, the problem with the early morning is that it's not LED. You don't have any more lights on it. The problem is that if you do it, uh, you know, at sunset, which can be cool, it is LED, but you have tons of people in front of it. So uh, what I did is I found a place in front of it where I went up on the fifth floor and took a photo of it at night. But the problem is, let me go into the develop module. You see how the night is very dark and the night is a big part of the composition. And if I open up the shadows, we still don't see anything in the dark. And you know, I don't like that. 
So then I had the idea of, because there's a tower uh, just in front of it, which I forgot the name, I'm sorry. And I went up to that tower and on the top of the tower, you have an amazing view of the city. And then I said, okay, I'm going to try to shoot it from above because it's an amazing, amazing view. And the fact that I'm shooting it from above, I'm not going to include the sky. So I was very happy about that. No sky is included. So that was very cool for the composition because uh, I could do this. I did this like at, at nine or 10, I think. Uh, let me see if I have the time on this, if my time is correct. Uh, ba ba ba. No, my time was wrong. It's probably on still on French time. So anyway, so this is a shot that I got. Now I want to talk to you a little bit of how I shot this. Now I shot this with Sony A7R, so it's a 36 million pixel file. I'm going to give you a smaller version of it so you can, you know, drill, train with it. Uh, it is, now I went to F16. The reason why I went to F16, and I know I've said this over and over, but in case you're watching this for the first time, is when you go to F16, look, what happens with the city light? They get very star light, a lot of stars on all the city lights. And it's much nicer than just a blob, you know, rounded uh, light. Okay. ISO 100, obviously, is the lowest ISO possible. I, I, so I was on a tripod and so I had a 13 second exposure. So I get the best of both worlds because 13 seconds of exposure, I get all the car trails everywhere. And that's really cool. Now, I, I tried two compositions, but I'm going to retouch this one first. So the key point is, of course, you have to be on a tripod when you do night photography. There's no question about that. And try to be at F16. It's a good spot because you get this really nice lights and you get the long trails from the cars because you're really forcing the long exposure by closing your aperture. So I'm going to open up the shadows and check this out. It's already pretty good. I'm going to bring down the highlights and then that's going to look very HDR. Then I'm, when you do you, your white point by holding on the Alt key, I'm going to move to the right until I see quite a little bit of city light. Okay, let me press I here. And then uh, my black point, I'm not gonna do much, just a little bit, it's already very dark. Okay, and um, now I'm, one of the key thing on this one is the uh, white balance. I think I'm gonna go, um, I'm not gonna go like daylight because it's not gonna look very great. Uh, cloudy is gonna look very warm, shade is gonna look very warm. We can try tungsten. Tungsten is kind of nice. It's very blue, uh, but it's too blue. And let's see fluorescent, what it gives. Fluorescent is not so bad. So uh, fluorescent is actually not so bad. What I choose, it was fluorescent and add a little bit more of magenta. Then I'm gonna boost your overall exposure. Maybe boost even more the white point. Okay, and boost the clarity. Now clarity works really well on night shots. I usually don't like to use clarity and I'm gonna add a lot of vibrance to make all the night color pops. Now check out what Vibrance does on night photos. Look the difference before, after. I really like to get all these colors out because that's really the only thing you have is colors. Okay, and I'm maybe gonna boost even more the exposure. Something like this. Bring down, open up the whites. Yeah. Um, and one thing you can do also is try some different cam camera calibration. Sometimes it works well on night shot, instead of Adobe, Adobe Standard, go for the landscape. Yeah, landscape makes much richer color. Or you can go for portraits. Sometimes that does, no, landscape is gonna be better. I think I'm gonna go for landscape. Okay, then I'm gonna unbound the profiles correction. Look at this, the difference, my God. Because I was shooting, I shot this with a 2470. It was probably, how much was I? I was at 24, so the, um, that's a lens that I use on the Sony 7R and uh, remove chromatic aberration in case there is any. And um, I'm maybe gonna add a little bit of contrast to this. But check it out, if I do, um, if I do, uh, this is how we touch it before, interesting. No, because when I do a, a backslash key, it gives me how we touched it before, which is not what I want, and I just realized that I had it a bit darker. So um, let's see here. This is where we started. Okay. And this is where we are. Now, I, I like that composition because that composition, you have the Palazzo di Bella Artes here on the right. And you have this amazing garden, which is look how they lighted the garden. We can see it's very graphical. The whole thing is very graphical. So I kind of like that. And um, 
once you can do once you've retouched one photo you press command c and you know i'm just going to select everything and oh one thing i forgot to do and that's very important is the um before i do command c is the sharpening sharpening i'm going to do my usual sharpening like around something like yeah 90 and then i'm going to do 10 of noise reduction because i always do a little bit of noise reduction and then i'm going to do my masking now masking on the sharpening what happens is that anything which is black is not going to get sharpened i usually put my masking around 50 so anything which is very uh, black or is not going to sharpen getting, getting sharpened anything which is very uh, only things which have details is getting sharpened Okay, then at this point, I would, you know, maybe, I don't know, I want to increase a little bit the exposure on this one. I think it's it's going to be even nicer. I think it's a nice shot. It becomes really nice. Let me show you again the before and after, because it's really a, a big difference before <laughs> and after. That's really the power of RAW files and, you know, of course, the Sony A7R, but also, you know, pro, pro, you know shooting a 100 ISO. Now, I think on this one, I want to, might want to go to Photoshop, but before I do that, I want to show you something. Command C. You know, all we've done so far, I'm just going to copy. And this one, which was shot with the same settings, I believe, but with completely different composition, I'm going to press Command V and it's going to copy what I did and boom. And uh, now I've got the photo, which is retouched. And this one is kind of cool. So maybe a bit too bright. So I'm going to lower a little bit the exposure, just a little bit. It depends on the, on your screen, you know, but it, I love the, the way it looks. Uh, and so I can even try on this one what it's going to give Command V. And uh, it might look very weird. Yeah, you see, uh, the sky is completely blown out. I mean, it's kind of nice, you know, I might use this photo, but I don't like when there is nothing in the sky like this, you know, but it's it's not so bad, but that's that's really night photography. And sometimes night photography can really be an art. I, uh, you know, I've not done it for, honestly, for many years. Of course, what's very nice is when you find a high vintage point. Now to finish this photo, I think I would, I'm gonna go to Photoshop and I just, you see how the, the lines all goes to toward this point. I want to see if I can just change it a little bit in Photoshop to make it a bit more square because this is square. There's a bit of, you know, I mean, there's many ways to do it, but uh, I'm going to do it just a simple way uh, using the um, uh, different things, different tools in Photoshop. Let me show you this in a second. So it's reading the camera roll format. And uh, usually the, the most simple way to do that is I'm going to press Z to zoom out so that it's small. I'm going to press Command J to put Command J is going to put duplicate this on its own layer and press Command T. And when I press Command T, I can I can just press a command uh, or I can just right click and do warp. See if I can do something with warp. Well, I want to make is just is make this square a little bit bigger uh, because yeah, warp is not so bad. Just a little tiny bit, you know. I just I, th I think that this this uh, park was way too uh, yeah the road is really curving like this okay that's not so bad warp will do just a little bit you know so that it's it's less look like before after you know not a big deal but so that we have more composition on this and voila that's basically it uh, that's my trick of the day uh, and I it I, it's funny because I I hadn't done this type of photography for so long and I thought. Well, let me put this for you in full screen so you see what I mean. I hadn't done, you know, this type of photography for so long because, you know, I don't like when there's details in the sky, but honestly, uh, I like the results. So now I'm going to go into every high vintage view of nice cities and do this type again of photography because I think it's really interesting. Voila, you just have to find a place that can accept tripod. That's the only trick. And actually, I think the place I was into did not accept tripod, but nobody went to bother me. So I just went ahead and did it, which is often what you have to do. Voilà, mesdames et messieurs, here is again the trailer from my latest course, which is Portrait Composite Course. Hope you're going to like this. It's a, it's a really fun course. I really try to do commercial uh, portrait, environmental portrait with the cheapest gear possible and making the Photoshop tutorials the shortest and the easiest possible. That was the uh, my goal, and I think uh, I made that goal. Thank you so much, and uh, here is the trailer. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I'm very excited to announce that I have a new course coming out called Portrait Composite Course. I've been dreaming about doing this course for a very long time. The whole idea is to make portraits, environmental type portraits, where it is a portrait and a landscape at the same time. What we try to do is find the cheapest gears on the planet to do it. So we found the entire gear for about $300 with flashes and we did five projects. Project number one, that we'll call the producer, we shot this amazing Hollywood producer 
over the Hollywood downtown area. And we shot him first with a flash and then took the lens cam and mixed both. That's the final result. We then did two projects with a cowboy. That's the first shoot under a tree. Same thing, you will get the full behind the scene, you will get the roll files, you will get all the retouching and that's the final result. Then we did like a more ranch type looking shoot. That's the final result. Same thing, you get the roll files. It was all done with the $300 gears and nothing else. Finally, we go to Man Man TV show type of shoot. We shot my buddy Calvin, which we dressed up like Don Draper in uh, uh, the TV show Man Man. And we first shot him in a restaurant. Now that was a very, very challenging photo. Completely backlit, very hard. You will get all the behind the scenes, all the raw files, all the retouching videos. That's the final result. And then we did a little Cadillac shoot, very like 60s looking. That's the final result. So in all, you've got five projects. This type of photography is really what is being looked today by big brands. And you can get started with it with very little money. So I hope you check out my portrait composite course. I've put all my heart into it and I hope you will love it. Wow, 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 wow.